yeah, thanks for coming on. How have you been? Thanks for having me. I've been pretty good. You've been pretty good. Um, I know you guys, or you probably just got out of, I don't know, maybe just a little bit of a break since uh, Open Qualifier 2. Um, you enjoying C Series 1 so far? I know I've been watching a lot of the games. Yeah, I'm actually, it's so exciting to see some of my friends in main event. I usually, like in the past, like I wasn't as ingrained in the game changer scene, so I didn't really know a lot of people, but it's a different feeling to have like someone you know and like you talk to, like competing on the big stage. So that's definitely exciting. No, yeah, it's actually kind of crazy because I think I remember when I did the the watch parties for like Cozy Clash, um, I had to add some of the players um, in the qualifiers so I could watch party. And I think I had Astralis on my friends list and I was like, wow, like she's in the main event. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and I mean, it's like the people were saying like it's like the most like, well, maybe not the most wide open because Shopify is still pretty damn good. But they were like, oh, this is the most free agent teams we've had in a long, long, long time since probably like 2020. 2021 days of like you know how many free agent teams are going to be in the thing it's crazy um you know obviously we've got a top four um and i was gonna ask for your predictions later so you know <laughs> viewers stay tuned um but yeah i mean it's as good a time as any to just you know officially start it so hello everyone welcome to spotlight this is the first episode of spotlight the emphasis podcast uh bringing you the stories behind the ign's Today we have, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Chloe. My IGN is Blockracy, and I'm a Game Changers player and content creator. Thank you. Yeah, so I think recently you played the Open Qualifiers 1 and 2 with Bumblebees. Um, how was that? Um, It was definitely a different experience. I've played like one other Game Changers before this, but it was on like a pug team and I was really new mm -hmm. to the scene so being able to like make it out of groups and make it to top 24 consistently in both of the open quals with like a bunch of people that I really enjoy playing with was definitely really fun and kind of reignited my spark for competing I guess that's great I mean I can't say I've ever competed because I'm I'm a filthy like I don't even know what I'm ranked right now because I <laughs> haven't I actually haven't placed but you know um I didn't play. I haven't played for like three, three, four acts. Um, it's bad, but yeah, I mean, it's it's cool to see a lot of these teams maybe stick together a little bit longer than you know in the past. I feel like teams kind of haven't been able to stick together. Like, you think that'll be something you you guys are gonna maybe focus on more, and then trying to build a little bit more of a map pool as well. In, yeah, in the, maybe looking for a series, or a series two. Yeah. So when we when we came into it, um. Root Cup actually put us together um, just randomly as kind of like a pug team. Um, but after our first open qualifier, we knew like the vibes were high. Like we really vibed with each other, like in game and out of game. Um, so that's definitely something we're we're looking to do to stick together for hopefully long term. Um, and yeah, right now we're taking a small little break and then we're going to start building out, um, like you said, like our map pool for the upcoming game. Yeah, I mean, everyone hates the current map pool. I mean, <laughs> myself included. I really want Fracture back. I really, Same. That's my favorite I really map. want Fracture back. <laughs> really want. I was happy to get Icebox back, but like, eh, not yeah, as much now. Yeah. It's 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 not really it. It's not hitting, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't play Jet anymore. All right, well, <laughs> at all. So it's, you know, it's not really hitting. And there's no Chamber, which was my one trick. I I was so good at Chamber, and they got rid of my boy um which is fine i was a filthy one trick op crutch it's fine um but in addition to you know competing um you also have a very successful tiktok um which you've been kind of building up for when i looked at it over two years i, <laughs> yeah. I did look back at some of your old tiktoks look a little bit like my old tiktoks which is <laughs> you know very very similar um and i think when i was looking through it i saw a lot of your old tiktoks were just kind of regular regular valorant tiktoks you know just oh this is a highlight of my play da, da, da. maybe this is just you know cool play i hit and then you started switching to what sapphire actually ended up extending your name to me uh when i was talking about getting more people um closer to gc report when it was gc report and not emphasis as it is now um and talking about creators maybe collaborating with people and i she said your name like first thing off the bat 
And um, when did you start changing your content a little bit like that towards not as maybe not GC focused, but you know what your content is now? Where did you find that niche? Um, well, when I first started doing content, I knew I kind of wanted to do something about women in esports. Um, but I was like bronze one or like iron when I first started making TikToks, and I didn't really feel like I could like show that oh like women can do these like amazing things because i'm like bronze um but once i started like going up the ranks and then i started competing i was like you know what like i really want to do this like i can talk about like other people who are successful not right now and then like in the future when i see some success and like when i'm at the level i feel comfortable making like tons of game changers content like that's what i want to do so it was like a gradual shift I feel like um, I don't know exactly when it started. Now I'm really happy with where I'm going. There's still a lot of changes I want to make. Um, but hopefully more Game Changers content to come. <laughs> Definitely. I love seeing more Game Changers content. I mean, when I started this, April 2022, I think. I think. Yeah, April 2022. So coming up on two years here, um, you know, I felt like I didn't feel like I was alone, but I did feel like I was carrying a a bit of the load and I didn't there was that whole imposter syndrome you know yeah. especially for me as like a you know like a cis male it's like I don't feel like I should be the voice for this community and you know it took me talking to a lot of people about that that issue and that that feeling to for them to be like no like you know maybe you aren't like the stereotypical or like you weren't what most people thought would be the voice for this community and you're not the only voice but like, we're glad that you are a voice for the community, you know, and that kind of helped me build my confidence, ultimately switching from like GC report to like emphasis, I think helped a lot in my confidence and kind of like not having to like face it grandly, off, like just straight up off of like GC and like using the Valorant logo in my logo, which was probably yeah. not a great <laughs> idea. Um, and kind of switching like that, I think it helped a lot. And, you know, you talked about like, bringing in new ideas for your content this is a new idea for my sort of content as well as that other one take that i you know i did a couple days ago um with the series one preview it didn't do too well but you know we're starting we're starting things off right um and then um finally for like you know introductions you're also a content creator for core like how it's how has that been you know when did that come about how has it been so far um you know, what's it I, like <laughs> sorry i uh i joined core in 2021 of october i think so i've been with them for a while and when i first joined like i hadn't really planned on joining like an organization or whatever but something about like the way they like talked to me and it felt like i was really gonna be a part of something like not just like a a small organization but like something that was like really gonna be fleshed out in the future like i, I felt like they had a lot of um a lot of potential and then now up to this year like the core valorant team is in challengers and just i don't know it's been a really exciting two years i got to meet them at vct champions and that definitely i wouldn't say like kickstarted my career but it gave me the opportunity to meet so many more people in the community um which has been really fun yeah i mean they're definitely like a total up and coming or that people are like you know it used to be just kind of i feel like the reputation used to be a little more of like the oh they, they have a lot of cool content creators they also have a team and then now it's becoming like oh they're kind of they're serious about this you know like they're getting serious especially with the challenger squall um and all of that like they're they're doing it you know and they like it's probably feels really cool to be part of like you know the come up right yeah definitely i i don't think i've like in my real life have really been a part of something that um, has been a progression like this. So it's definitely interesting to see like how much they've improved over the year, both like in terms of content and like our Valorant team. And honestly, it's just, it's amazing to be a part of. It's when they qualified for challengers, I know everyone was like ecstatic, specifically one of the podcast people, Galaxy, he was freaking out. Everyone's so excited that they're in Challengers, and I know they have big things ahead of them, so it's definitely been amazing to be a part of that. Yeah, Challengers is definitely going to be something to watch this year, especially because America's just kind of building that reputation as, like, we're kind of the big dogs as far as, like, 
DCT. Like it looks like America's is almost the one of the more like the most competitive regions. Like the gap between at least the top two teams and like the bottom, you know, the bottom four seems to be like very very close. You know, um, speaking of VCT, first question is what is your All Star VCT roster? Like Just VCT. Any players or like any five which, which from team? Any five from the from franchise league? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, okay. Um. My favorite player of all time is Boaster, so he would definitely be one of them. Um, let's see what else. I think I like Boaster. He's an IGL and plays Smokes. Mm-hmm. Does it have to be like role specific or just like any players? I, I mean, like? if you think that you want to put, you know, tens back on Duelist, you can put tens back on Duelist. But you know, let's let's say let's say you can keep them within their agent pool that they've played ever. So like maybe they switched because of a different like maybe like mm. oh you want you want Pankata on a on a smokes role mm-hmm. not Sentinel Jail you know yeah let's let's sit, let's keep it like that. I guess that that'll be the rule okay um so <laughs> definitely Boaster number one IGL and smokes um I think who else would I put on there I would put okay <laughs> I like um. Hmm. This is difficult. I feel like all the players I like are IGLs. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. You just have all the ideas flowing at the same yeah, time. True, true. Okay. Um, let's see. I would also put FNS in there because he's also one of my play- favorite players. Um, I don't know. I guess does that even work? I guess he also. I don't know. He'll be no, on he like plays... the lurk, like Sentinel. Role, he's okay? on the Sentinel, the yeah. Viper. You know. Yeah, yeah. He's fine. Um, and then who else? I think, um, I do like Tens better on Smokes, so I'm not going to put him on my team, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, Tens is washed, yeah. you heard it here first. R.I.P. Tens. <laughs> R.I.P. Tens. Wait, can I put, like, can I put Game Changers players on it, too? I actually, I'm going to ask your GC All-Star roster okay, right okay. after this. I'll do so that we'll stick you. franchise right now. Okay. Um, who else? Hmm. I think I would put Durka as duelist because I genuinely okay. think, like, with the right initiator, he is, like, such a good duelist. He is um, really good. Oh, He's very so scary. This is so difficult. <laughs> well, we're missing the flex and the info, right? Yeah. Yeah, flex and info. Um, I think for flex, I would put Zelsis because he has been all over my Twitter the last couple <laughs> of days promoting this damn Sentinels bundle. Like, I'm about to buy it. I'm just um, mad they didn't put their buddy as red. That was a that that was what bothered me. I know. Me. I know. Like, half like it's not like they said you could only use white because like yeah. Lev's got their blue, Loud's got their green. I feel yeah. like some teams just didn't use the colors. I know, but right? She, I think Carmine Core is is white, mm-hmm. and it's like that's a big opportunity. Like, what color is it? Blue, and then they're like, oh no, actually it's white. Oh, darn. So we've got we've got. IGL, Boaster, you're making Boaster the primary? Yeah. We're making Boaster, we got FNS, Durka, and then your you said your info is, or your flex is Zelsis, mm-hmm. so the, the vibe merchant, and then yeah. so we're missing a, an info player, I think. The last one, I think, would be, would be Calm, just because, Ooh. like, every time he popped a sofa all in Champions last year, he was good for at least one. So definitely yeah. top info player for me. <laughs> that yeah no that that EG run was kind of crazy. Yeah, I think honestly I I, I kind of I feel like some people are like I wish they stayed. <laughs> it would it just I feel like it'd be so interesting to see how they played this year. Yeah, you I know? agree. I I think you know Jogamo is still doing crazy stuff. I think Busio I think needs to be a little louder. I don't know. You watched? Did you watch the Hundred Thieves Com video? I did not. Oh, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> I saw a clip of uh, FNS watching it. He was mm-hmm. losing it because they were just so chaotic. Um, That's never a good. A lot sign. of, a lot of. It was, it was very, very chaotic comms, and like you could barely hear Boosty. And so then that was the whole thing of like, you know, I remember hearing the. I feel like I watched the EG comms, and they were like pretty, pretty solid. You know, yeah. but it's a new team, so. So maybe we'll see, because I think Busio got out of contract jail like, a little bit late. So, you know, mm-hmm. they have a little bit of space to go. 
Yeah. And then, I mean, Demon 1 and Ethan, we knew they were going to be good. Um, I think they need a little bit more depth in their work with with uh, with NRG. Yeah, and I They agree. need to figure out. Because it's just, I think the problem is, is that I feel like Victor isn't as good of a raised player as Jogama was. You know? Mm-hmm. And then right now you need a raised player. Yeah. Which sucks. Because, <laughs> I mean, you think about it, like, you need a raised player and then, like, because Demon wants raises god awful apparently yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's god awful um i feel like his omen wasn't as solid though either when he played when they played against sen it just seemed a little little off um yeah i don't I think don't i feel like demon one's like a jet player through and through i don't think like yeah when he's on brim like it's all right um yeah his brim is like, all right because he he's no he knows it you know yeah yeah I feel like he still needs time to learn the omen or maybe i don't know but i don't know about time they take a scent out of the freaking comps can they take For a scent out of the pool because like we figured it out you know yeah we figured it out as a community <laughs> everyone runs the same comp except for supernova they ran a different comp they 13 won uh what's the name they, they 13 won the boys on it mm-hmm. actually and then they, and then they got 13 threed my passion project so i mean all right um but yeah no the follow-up question is what is your all-star gc roster who are you putting on the all-star game changers team? i feel like this is so like difficult because the all-star gc <laughs> roster to me is shopify rebellion See, but right you now. can't just say shopify rebellion because that's a boring answer and i can't I make a graphic out of that <laughs> um, <laughs> um let's see here okay i think Obviously, Mel. Mel has been my favorite player since I started playing Valorant. Um, are you putting, like, started... Prime Chamber Mel, or are you putting, like, current IGL Mel? Mm, I would say current IGL Mel. I feel like, like, she is just so smart now. Like, she's making deep runs into challengers. Uh, like, the amount of progress she's made in terms of her IGLing, like, specifically in co-ed, like, she has made mm-hmm. so much progress. Um, Obviously, the rest of the team as well. So I definitely think like Mel right now is like peak Mel. <laughs> I think um, I think but that prime that chamber run was something to watch. Oh yes. Yeah, chamber Mel was. was something to watch. Yeah. She was a she was crazy. Let's say I'm gonna limit you to two players from SR. Oh jeez. Okay. <laughs> oh, Which is hard because um, they're yeah. all like they're all either one or two in their role. Yeah. So Okay. Well, I'll uh, take a trip to like somewhere else another team mm-hmm. for now um i think sedona is like the second best duelist in game changers other than Dota fluorescent um i don't know what role i would have around because i don't know what like role she's played before this um but i feel like i could see her because i feel like there's a lot of double duelist comps right now i could definitely see her on like a secondary duelist i still don't know if i'm gonna put fluorescent on my dream team or not so if fluorescent's on there i'm gonna say didona is like a secondary duelist and if not Mm -hmm. she's the primary (laughs) okay the (laughs) secondary she's either the primary depending on how you how you build the rest of the team or she's the flex yeah We'll we'll give her the flex role i think i've seen her play like I don't know if I've seen her play Breach, but I swear I've seen her play KO before, or like mm-hmm. Sky, in like certain rosters. Yeah. So, I think she played Sky. She might have played that in in Cozy Clash, because I think she was subbing in for she was subbing in with DSG, mm-hmm. and so I think they had Unstable on that team. So they were, they, I think, Unstable was Duelist. Yeah. Um, and then so Dodo, I think, was like Breach. The Dodo, I think, I think Dodo was Breach. The Dodo Breach, I think, went crazy. If I'm remembering correctly, <laughs> I was also sick at that tournament, but that's not important <laughs> so we've got dodo and we've got mel as the igl so mel we're having mel as the smokes yeah yes because noya is sentinel mm-hmm. the smokes so mel is the smokes smokes igl you like your smoke igls huh i do it's probably because <laughs> i'm a smoke igl <laughs> um okay oh, okay this is gonna be tough now because I feel like all of my favorite players in Game Changers right now, like, are duelists, which is really bad. Um, so who's your info player? Who's my info player? 
This is a tough one because I honestly I think Lazy Lion would be the info player for me because the way they have been looking on Sova has been insane. So I definitely think Lazy Lion for info. Okay. I was I my I think my personal pick is maybe Lace. Mm, I really like I think Lace is one. really good. Lace is really good. Yeah. And then we've got either your duelist or your flex, and then your senti. Let's go senti. Let's see who your senti is. Okay, because I'm only allowed two players on Shopify, mm -hmm. I think I'm still going to take <laughs> Noya because I definitely think she's like the number one sentinel in Game Changers. And just like she's just a top sentinel in general. Her lurk timings are insane and she knows exactly when like she should push up or when she should just play contain. So I definitely think I would have Noya on my dream team. <laughs> Her rifling is kind of crazy, actually. Oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then you're moving Dodo to Duelist. Yep, that is okay. true. Oh, so who's who's players. picking up Flex? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. I feel like there's like a drought of Flex players, specifically in my level of game changers. Um, I don't know. This one's difficult because I like genuinely. I forgot who plays um like flex for passion project but um i think it they have a weird roster because they have jazzy yeah. and unstable so it kind of depends yeah and then because i think lazy it's isn't it unstable lazy lion jazzy um i think yeah i think sometimes unstable plays the sky but then like if unstable's on duelist then jazzy is a senti so then they have someone else play flex it's a weird roster. Yeah, I... Okay, whoever is, I guess, like, unstable, I don't know for sure, but, like, if that but is... But you're going to put unstable in, yes, in flex yes, jail. Yes, yes, <laughs> Unstable doesn't have a choice. <laughs> Sorry, you're in flex jail now. Yeah, no, I mean, maybe, is... maybe like, maybe in the third, like, the second map of a BO3, if you're, like, 13-1, then you can, like, Dodo and, and unstable switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't see now it's bugging me. Now I'm gonna look it up and see who their actual <laughs> who their roster is. And I'm like I'm like forgetting. And that's not good because I literally wrote like yesterday on about it. Sibui is their smokes player. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then oh, Power Pixel. How can I, I don't know it? why I didn't remember that. Okay, so Because it, it was Kara, that's why. It's cause it was oh, Kara. Yes. Okay. Then I'll I'll put mm, I don't know. Wait, now I don't Ooh, know. Outside the region too. Outside the region? Oh, God, oh, you're really going to be testing me here. Well, I, like, I didn't say you had to go outside the region. But I'm just saying you could. I I'm mean, like Mimi, trying is, to think... Mimi is sitting right there. Okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> choose Mimi then. <laughs> Mimi scares me. Um, yeah, I can... Understandable. <laughs> yeah, she scares me a little bit. Um, just because, like, it seems like she's always, like... She's like, I don't know if you know basketball term. She's like Jimmy Butler. It seems like G2 are just kind of like hanging out. Like last two years, they're just kind of hanging out during the regular season. And then, especially this year, that like this last year, they were just kind of hanging out. And then playoffs came on. They're like, what's up? Time to no, go literally. almost win the whole thing. Literally. And then they like made this crazy run. They did the same thing where they switched someone on to Duelist. And then, uh, yeah, that, that's why they scare me. Um, okay, the second question is a little more topical. How do you feel Riot has done? How good of a job do you think they've done with GC and promotion of GC this year? Um, well, in general, not just this year, I definitely think like Riot is one of the best companies. Um, specifically like for like marginalized genders in esports. I think they've done like the most out of all of them. Um that being said, like I know there has been some criticism about like the open quals not having casted streams. Um, I don't know how much that bothers me, but what did really bother me was, um, the Game Changers Champions last year, how this amount of, like, seating in the building was, like, I don't know, like, 160 or something, or I don't know how much it was. It, it was, was like, like, less than the year before. It was, it was a really small crowd. I remember even seeing it, it was a really small crowd. Yeah. It looked small, but it was loud. Yeah. I and mean, those Brazilian fans show up, you yeah, know. Yeah, for real. 
Yeah, that is one thing that did bother me. Um, I know it's kind of like esports is kind of I want I don't want to say struggling, but like money Winter. is not as yeah, it's not as good as it was. So I, that may have been why they did it. Um, but I definitely think like the first Game Changers Champions, like there was much more advertising. Even the seating for that was like small because I remember people being like frustrated with that. But then the next year, like. There was, I feel like there was less content about it and mm -hmm. um, like a smaller arena. That is one thing that bothered me. I think other than that, like they've done a really good job. Um, I like that main event right now is on Valorant Americas mm -hmm. because like other esports, sometimes like they don't put that on their main channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think they've done a pretty good job overall. Just like the champions thing is something that kind of bothered me a little bit. Yeah, I I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people have talked to me about like, oh, like, why aren't they doing the um like the, the little short videos that they did um a couple, I think it was 2021 towards series three, where they did those sit downs in like the garden with like, I want to say it was with, I want to say it was with Potter, but I don't think it was. No, I it think might have been. I remember their one being like Potter and Mel together. Mm -hmm. And they were like wearing like you know they were all dressed up and everything and that was really cool um but i think they, they're they trying to strike that balance between like having all this content but also like letting the players be comfortable yeah um because yeah, i know like you know we've no like a lot of people notice like the some of the teams are missing the headshots stuff like that um at least but you know that's because of you want the players to be comfortable right yeah um so that's kind of the the line that they're trying to toe and I think they've done a good job this year. Um, and obviously, there's always still work to be done, right? So, you know, if they need help. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so question three, we're going through these real quick. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> is um, about the shorter off season. Because I remember we all thought that, like, GC was, like, going to be, like, maybe probably april right a yeah. lot of us thought april because of just how it was the last two years and they're like oh yeah by the way we're starting our quality chain and everyone was yeah. like what um so and that was kind of the reason why a lot of orgs ended up leaving the scene right because i remember hearing you know whispers of things that people were planning to do you know probably i feel like teams were probably planning to rebuild during january you know and I think probably that probably had something to do with contracts ending at the calendar year, stuff like that. How did you feel about seeing like the mass exodus? Like, do you think it's a temporary thing? I think it's a temporary thing. But. Um, it's a little upsetting to see, especially like when this is like the scene I'm a part of. Um, however, like one thing I will say is that I think it makes the competition like a lot more fierce, if you will. Um, because generally it's like some teams, not all of them, but I feel like some teams like don't really try to go outside of game changers, um, and are kind of just grinding to get like on an org in game changers. Um, and I do think like now there's a lot more competition and like people trying to branch out to co-ed or like competing co-ed tournaments with their game changers teams. Um, which is something I like. I do think the orgs will come back eventually, but like I kind of mentioned earlier, like a lot of people are trying to cut costs right now and game changers isn't always profitable if mm -hmm. you don't make it profitable. Cause I feel like Shopify Rebellion does a really good job with that. Um, they have content from their team. Obviously they're like one of the best teams right now. Um, so that does help, but they're, I feel like they also make money off of having a game changers team. Some of the other teams don't necessarily do that. Like, it was kind of just, like, a side thing, you know, and their main team mm -hmm. was, like, the main focus. And when they ran out of money, like, it's kind of difficult to have, like, a team that's not making the money because they're not really, like, using that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I feel like we back. haven't seen them, like, a lot of teams, sorry, um, haven't, like, you know, utilized their, their players for, like, content as much as they maybe could have. Mm -hmm. And, like... Having met a lot of these players at like tournaments like Astral Clash, um, other play I mean other tournaments, I don't remember whatever. Or even like at Code Lands, like at, at in, in Vegas about a year ago, you know, 
a lot of these players have really really interesting personalities and a lot of i think a lot of people don't really know that because the orcs just have a harder time maybe fitting that into the schedule or you know getting the right content like i think fly quests is one of the big examples of an org that's doing a lot with their players as far as content even like the little things like the the starbound vlog which was really cool to kind of see you know the day in the life and how it works and just like having met starbound or i don't think i met starbound actually having met sonder in texas the last a couple couple week months ago um has a really great personality and then we knew this from like 2021 right and and stuff like that um but like speaking about champs like you know if it follows the pattern they're gonna do a champs in la soon i hope fingers crossed i hope so i hope so <laughs> it's probably gonna they're probably gonna skip it i swear because i'm thinking because like they did a masters in berlin and then they did a champs in berlin obviously it's not a direct competition like line otherwise they would go to reykjavik but like you know they did one in berlin they did champs in berlin and they did that and they did kick off in brazil and then they did you know they did chance in la like they should do they should do yeah. gc in la like it'd be really fun i'd be i'd be there i'd actually go to gc <laughs> it's hard to yeah. go to it's really hard to go to berlin or istanbul wasn't it one year um was it berlin it was berlin it was berlin i want to say it was berlin but i actually might be wrong it's one of them <laughs> It was somewhere yeah. in not America. Um, I'm looking it up now. 2022. It was in Berlin. That's right. W. Berlin. Yeah, Berlin and then Sao Paulo. Or, yeah, right? In Brazil. And so, like, those are obviously very big costs for me to try and go as an independent journalist. I couldn't yeah. go. But like LA is like up the street, you know. I could go. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Let me do that, please, please, right? Listen to me, and then also give me a gun buddy because I don't have one. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> like, please, I need it. Um, yeah. Okay, so moving to the next segment. Um, actually, brief sec before this. Do you have questions you want to ask me? Do I because, have questions? Oh, yeah. No. I didn't because, come prepared for this. <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what people want to know about me. So What I want to know open. about you? Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like we haven't talked for a long time. Are you, like, still it's doing, like, GC report or, like, under your name or no more GC report? <laughs> so, um, I think a couple months ago, I want to say a couple months ago, um, I switched, I rebranded basically. I rebranded GC Report into Emphasis. Yeah. Because I wanted to give us, us, I say us, me, and also my writers, uh, two writers that I have that help a lot, K Donut and Rain, help a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, a little bit more flexibility. Say, like, say Valorant just dies as a game. Hmm. You know, I want to be able to go to the next game or whatever. Yeah. And then, especially because I've talked to Emily a lot. And she keeps telling me, you need to cover impact. You need to cover impact. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have the manpower. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have enough people to cover impact and GC at the same time, especially because they run almost simultaneously. I think they, I think Team Karma is actually playing in impact currently. Yeah. So it's kind of a lot of stuff for me to cover. Um, but also, I just wanted to give it kind of a new fresh coat of paint. My cousin did a really good job with these graphics, including this background that you see, <laughs> uh, the new logo um and like the exclamation point as like the branding which i thought was super cool because then i put that in front of my username on twitter and in front of the emphasis username on twitter so then it like like matches which is kind of cool yeah. um and i'm still posting articles i'm still writing articles um uh, and i'm trying to branch into other kind of content with emphasis which is fun um and you know kind of all this whole tagline that i came up with after we had rebranded the name to emphasis we had kind of gone with Oh, what's the what should I you know second tagline be like bringing the spotlight, which is the theme of kind of maybe not this maybe not this year, but this is kind of the theme of the rebrand and theme of emphasis is like kind of spotlighting cool people, like you you know, oh, thank you, <laughs> and that's kind of the the goal is to bring the spotlight, you know, in a good way, um, because a lot of people I I know at least a lot of people's first 
contact with GC is drama, which is, yeah. you know, not ideal. Um, and so this is kind of maybe my way to bring it the other direction, where this is kind of a way for people's first contact with GC to be not the drama and like, oh my god, Bob just qualified to challengers and stuff like that, you know, which is cool. Um, and that's where we're at. I mean, we're coming up on two years now of doing this and uh, we're having fun, you know? Very cool. Okay. No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot um, with another, with having to ask another question because it's, you know, <laughs> you don't have any because I don't know. Um, moving on. Next segment is in the wings. Um so since this is the first podcast, I'm gonna briefly briefly explain it. In the wings is a section for both you and me to reveal something a little bit shocking or a little bit interesting that the viewers might find cool and also really great for clickbait. I'm just kidding. Um and just something that, you know, kind of shows off like where, you know, who's you know what who you are, kind of. But if you wanna go first, you want me to go first. You should go first. <laughs> you sh- I should go first? Yeah. Um Okay, something shocking about me. Or not maybe not shocking isn't the word I should say. I just it's just what's written in my notes. Um something interesting about me is that so like a lot of people Valorant is my first FPS. Um I started playing or I started my like history of like competing in like elementary school. I played basketball for like 10, 12 years. Um, since I was like eight, I th- no, not eight. I think I played basketball when I was like six until like high school. Then I switched to volleyball, um, and then I kind of stopped. You know, I lost the the drive to compete in in sports. Um, but I was a traditional athlete, at least traditional sports. You know, uh, for a long time, and then recently I have picked up a lot of expensive hobbies, such as keyboards, um, and shoes. <laughs> so i i have over there you can't see it but i have a shoe like box tower of like clear boxes with my shoes in them i have four different pairs of like dunk lows that i like to wear but not pandas because those are basic um and then a bunch of other shoes and then like the keyboard like i have a a stack of keycap sets underneath my bed and there's like there's like six of them so I don't spend my money very well. This is also another mouse pad hanging up. And I have oh my one on my desk. And I have one <laughs> over there. And I have two on the wall over there. So keyboard stuff. I spend too much money. Yeah. Okay. That was... I don't know if that was enough of an interesting thing. But I'll let you go now. <laughs> it's so funny that you brought up, like, traditional sports. Because that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Well, you can. You still can. I didn't say you couldn't. <laughs> okay. I um, I used to be like a runner in high school or whatever. And when I went to college, um, I was like, oh, crap, like maybe I could actually like do this. So then I ended up like running for a D1 school for a little bit on their cross country team. But then I got like a concussion in a car accident. And then I was like, oh, "Oh, wait, you know what? Maybe like I don't want to do track anymore. And I had just started playing Valorant. So I was like, you know what? Um, I'm just going to like quit. And then I started playing Valorant. (laughs) So, yeah, that's how that happened. That's actually just really funny. I think a lot of I feel like it's kind of interesting how many people in esports like Maybe not. Maybe didn't get their start competing, but like played traditional sports at some point or another in their life. Because yeah. I feel like I remember. I remember hearing Lace played volleyball. I think she played collegiate too, if I'm not mistaken. She definitely looks like a volleyball player. She's tall <laughs> enough. She would roof me, um, block right over me. I was a setter. I I was only, I was actually only five foot four when I graduated high school. I think, maybe not. That's still I didn't break than me. five foot. <laughs> I didn't break five foot until I graduated until after I graduated middle school. Hmm. I was a really late grower, um, which is like, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then like, yeah, I mean, like, it'd be really cool to like see like people or like you know, do some sort of sport thing with esports. It'd be kind of funny just to see like the gamers play like basketball yeah. or volleyball. But I feel like then the orgs wouldn't like okay it because they're like, oh, what if they like hurt their wrist? <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Okay, never mind. 
but so that's been one of my like pipe dreams is like get let's get a valorant volleyball tournament and we'll play volleyball you know but that i don't think it's insane happen. oh my god it's never gonna happen <laughs> um we did oh and then i think one other thing i had under in the wings was i remember i saw one of when i was doing research i saw one of your old tiktoks where you checked your valorant purchase history <sighs> and it was at four hundred dollars mm-hmm. how much is it at now do you want me to go check do you know a ballpark um it's probably like nearing 2000 right oh now my goodness. but it, it makes me happy so <laughs> so it's priceless yeah yeah girl math yeah exactly i didn't buy this bundle so i can buy the next one no literally like it's like i haven't bought like the last seven bundles so i mm-hmm. should buy this new one Except I'm not going to buy the new one because it doesn't have a purple skin. Uh, none of them have purple skin. It's honestly fake, for real. It's and I want so like a yellow up. skin, okay? I support the people who want pink and purple, but I want a yellow one. You still rocking with, like, yellow prime? Is that the only thing you can use? Um, I don't know. There's, like, the KJ shorty. That one's yellow. KJ shorty is nice. <laughs> that one is nice. That one's cool. I do, I do really like the KJ shorty. But I use, what do I use right now? The Pathfinder one. It's the the black one with like the mm. the hundred thieves looking pattern on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um my whole my whole locker is like purple and gold if I can do it. <laughs> so I have like champs. I have the champs fandom and vandal, the new one. It's purplish. And then I've got like Sentinels of Light stuff. I've got um like RGX, but I switch it to purple always. Um I've got like Chrono Void, which is like kind of eh. like <laughs> you don't like it. It. W- it was so good when I got it, and then I got the Champs Vandal and the Champs Phantom, so those took over those spots. And then I still use Sentinels Deeg, so that one's gone. So it's literally only sitting on my Judge, which is fine. And I have like so- I have like the the Black Sovereign ones with the the purple on them. I think I might actually be using white. So- no, I'm using Black Sovereign with the purple, <laughs> and then. I think. Um oh, the Neo Frontier. I really like Neo Frontier. Mm. I think yeah. that's a really fun bundle. I I really like that one. It's just the flippiness. The ADHD in me is like flippiness. Because it like everything you when you pull out except for the Odin, but everything you pull it out and it like the Marshall like he like they like flip it and it's like, whoa. Yeah. Spin. You know? <laughs> My brain goes to a different place mm. i'm like I, I can you know i have the axe so i spin the axe all the time and it's like <laughs> it's bad because then i get caught with my not with my knife out i get caught transitioning back to my knife and then i have to pull my gun back out oh my god try to kill them it's bad this is why i don't play anymore <laughs> um and then before we uh, heat actually yeah we will move into heat check i was gonna say we should do a section and i'm like we put it in heat check so moving into heat check this is our section for your hot takes um in real life or in you know in Valorant. Oh, but before we get to your hot takes, I want to get your pickums. GC My is pick-ups? just kicked off probably oh, as we're filming this. So, yeah, sorry if this is going to ruin the immersion for the viewers, but we're filming this <laughs> on uh March 8th. So, happy International Women's Day, but also True. there's two matches today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shopify Rebellion versus FlyQuest. Who do you have winning that? And what score? I mean, okay, listen, let's I think Shopify is going to win, but if I'm not mistaken, FlyQuest or Passion Project or both of them, maybe in the last, like, or in the first open qualifier, both took a map off of Shopify. Mm -hmm. I still think Shopify is going to win, but, like, they have so many VODs on Shopify that they can, like, anti-strat them up the ass. So it's definitely (laughs) possible that they're sorry if I'm not allowed to say that. But it's No no it's fine. It's pa it's way past the first ten minutes, so we don't care. (laughs) It's definitely (laughs) possible that they could do some damage today. So it's it's gonna be a fun match to watch. It's gonna be fun. Especially with Jovi. I think Jovi's a pretty damn good coach. So For real. I think they made a cook some but you know Effie's is pretty good too. (laughs) Um and then in the lower bracket, there's Passion Project and Decimate, newly newly signed Decimate. Um, Misu's cuties. Who do you have winning that one? I have Passion Project, and I do think like Decimate's a really good team, but mm-hmm. I just think Passion Project, like the top three teams in Game Changers, are, are always like 
so far ahead. Like, I just feel like their macro overall is just, like, very tight, specifically for Passion Project right now, especially because I'm pretty sure Jazzykins is IGLing right now. Mm -hmm. And, like, she started last year, and, like, the difference in last year to this year in terms of, like, her growth as an IGL has been insane. And I definitely think, like, she's just... She's just amazing right now. Like all of her calls look really tight, and I think they're probably gonna thirteen o thirteen o or something like that. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> there's there's one map that I don't like on Passion Project, which is their ice box. Mm, their I ice like box is <laughs> their ice box is a little suspect, and I and I I know Jazzy and I love Jazzy, but please keep perma banning ice box. They did in their last series. They. <laughs> They picked Icebox, I think, against um, who was it? They picked it against FlyQuest, and it was it was yeah. a little bit odd. And then they they went straight into SNG, and they perma and they first they first pick banned it. And I was like, thank you, please yeah. keep banning it because I it was I think it was the comp to be honest. Yeah, it was the Gecko Chamber. The I like I like the idea. I just think like KJ is just so much more like versatile on that map. Well, that's I just think me. it's just it's just that they didn't have any because there's just no you can't cover anything. Yeah. The chamber's not. If you want the chamber to play, you know, if you need you need another like pseudo senti and not just the viper. Yeah. Like icebox is kind of requires like a senti and a half, you know, the KG and the viper. So then it's like, you know, when you're kind of counting chambers like half of a sentinel. Then yeah. you kind of only have one. You're still half a sentinel short, so you need like yeah. not like a harbor, but you need you do need like maybe like a deadlock, which is wild to say, but like, or you need to not have a chamber, you know, yeah. or you take chamber out for like you take out the jet and then you move someone else onto like another anchor, like something like that. I don't know, maybe a harbor, double smokes, pull out yeah. the loud comp harbor viper. <laughs> I didn't like the I didn't like their icebox though, and everyone's I've heard a lot of discourse about like. I hate their icebox. Please ban it, but that's fine. So then in your pickums, you've got Passion Project and FlyQuest in the lower final. Who is winning that? Okay, I think, well, people yell at me because I usually do my pickums based on who I want to win and not who I think <laughs> is going to win. But I want Passion Project to win. I just, like, I really want to see, like, Jazzykins, like, shine in Game Changers. I feel like she's put so much work into it, especially, like, since her C9 white days. And I just, like, mm-hmm. I want to see her at the top. FlyQuest is awesome. Their graphics are very cool. But I want I want Passion Project. I want a FlyQuest jersey. I want to add it to no, my same, wall. Same, same. I want to add it to my wall because I only have two and a half esports jerseys on that wall. One of them is the Champions jersey, so that's a half jersey. It's the, the basketball jersey. But then I have that 100 Thieves jersey, the 18T one, which is kind of cool looking. I have an Emily jersey, which she <laughs> she so so graciously gifted me about a year ago. And it's been hanging up my wall ever since. But I need a new one. So FlyQuest, if you watch this, Chloe, you might be watching this. Chloe, other Chloe. Chloe yeah, Gaming. Yeah, the other one. <laughs> send me a jersey. I'll send you my address. <laughs> <laughs> um... And send and send one to to Chloe yeah, here too. Yeah. Send send the other Chloe a jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta send it to Chloe first. That's the other Chloe. Like to get to the same name. Okay, but staying in heat check, hot takes, game changers, BCT. What's your hot take that you wanna that you wanna just put out there? I how like hot is the take supposed to be? Uh, hotter than let's say hotter than like the water coming out of the hose in the summer. So it doesn't have to be like scorching hot, but not lukewarm, okay. not a lukewarm take. You can't be like, oh, you can't be like, oh, Passion Project Icebox sucks. You can't. <laughs> That's not your hot take. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. This is rough. I feel like I have a lot of takes. Um, one thing I will say. Hmm. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta think about how to word this. You know. Hmm. I think, like, EG last year was, like, a really solid team. And I think all the players are super solid. Um, but I do think, like, like 
Demon 1 has, like, crazy aim, but I just, like, don't think he's being, like, used the same way. Like, I feel like Busio is, like, the right IGL for that team, mm -hmm. you know? And now that, like, he's kind of, like, on an Omen and Jet roll, like, I I don't like it as much, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, that's a good, that's a good take. I think I agree with that take, because it's, like, we both talked, we already talked about this, you know? Like, he he's a little, he looks off with the optic core, you know? Yeah. It just looks a little weird where it's like I think also that what the what they kind of benefited from was that I think on a lot of maps they were still running double no because they had the aggressive they had a more aggressive secondary with Jogamo yeah. right yeah and then they didn't have I feel like they don't have that aggressive secondary on on optic because I think Marv is a more traditional smokes player right closer to like boaster where he's gonna he is gonna survive versus like they need they need a tens <laughs> you know and then i think that's where the meta is going with where you need that aggressive secondary smokes you know the flex kinds the flex smokes where you have like a viper or like or you don't need your smokes as much you yeah. know and you can still run with like because i think john cutie is doing a really good job on sen with like setting tens up to still be aggressive but yeah. like also like letting him play the the game he wants because i feel like we've heard a lot of times but even when he was like peak tense he was like i love being the secondary in entry you know and they've just let second go all the way and i think that that's what they're missing on, on nrg is they need a, a yeah. secondary maybe maybe that has to be ethan and it has to be your your flashes go in second but like it's probably harder because he's calling right hmm. and so so i think we like, yeah we're forgetting about victor but he's on sentinels a lot you know so it's just difficult for I think they're them to have that follow up that I think lets Demon One play it more freely. Yeah, I think I that agree. might be what it is. He's I think he's playing a little too like locked up. You know, he's like I have to get two, and uh, maybe, you know, in the previous games it was like you only can't you're good to get one. I think that's also why Paper Rex is not doing so good this year. It's because they don't. Yeah, have Yeah, that's a uh, I I miss Jing. <laughs> we all miss Jing. Yeah, we love Jing, and. Not yeah, not having that secondary jet is just. I feel like W gaming is a little. They're too structured now. Yeah. With without Jing, they don't have that element of chaos of like RNG type of stuff. Because mm -hmm. something is great, but like I feel like Monette's raise is just. It's good, <laughs> but it's not. It's not like amazing level. So hot take. I think Paper X is gonna get grouped. I know. I, I still voted that. I don't know if that's a hot take win. though. I don't know if that's a hot take though because everyone says like Gen G, Sentinels, K Corp, Prior Takes, that's the top four. And mm -hmm. it's like, dang. And then you think about EDG is still there, right? Yeah. Um, Loud is still there. Loud is definitely probably a top four team, right? Yeah. It's a, such a it's such a cutthroat this is such a cutthroat like beginning of the season where it's like you lose twice, you're done. Oh, and then 100%. like you go to and then you go to Madrid and then you're like also by the way, you lose twice again, you're done. Yeah, literally. So it's like, <laughs> it's like you could have a bad matchup. Like, Send Heretics is like a weird matchup where it's like you have to kind of. I don't know how they're gonna the matchup exactly against Heretics. I don't. I haven't watched too much Heretics gameplay. Hmm. I did watch K Court beat Fnatic because that was kind of fun. That was a fun match to watch. I know you have all of the Fnatic stuff in the back. Yeah, I know. I that was a fun Fnatic match. Post. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fun match to watch and also kind of cool story like redemption wise with k-court kind of being the laughing stock of last year's yeah even though i don't know my japanese heritage is suffering because because zeta didn't make it in to playoffs and didn't we don't talk about dfm um <laughs> yes did you hear we, were you watching the game changer stream yesterday i Why was but i wasn't i wasn't listening I was Why are like notes. low key slighted DFM <laughs> and like Decimate had like a bad like post plan. It was like they only won like two out of seven or three out of mm. seven. And he said, oh, like they're better than like DFM or whatever. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, but DFM, we don't talk like, about like similar. DFM. And they have a bad capsule too. <laughs> the card is so really basic. This year. The card is so basic. Ugh. <laughs> All these teams needed to just use color. The Leviathan bundle is so good, but I, I know. don't know if I can bring myself to root for Lev. Some of them are like so clean, but it's like none of the teams that I like 
the MIBR bundle is freaking nice. I know. And so the classic the, is I like nice. the Paper X one too. The Paper X one was okay for me. I it was a little odd. I don't know what I yeah, there was something yeah. I didn't like about it. It was a little odd. <laughs> the Gen G one was freaking sick. Yeah. The card for Gen G is so nice. Um but yeah, use the colors, man. I wish they would have used real. the colors. Like, it's just because I was looking through it the other day. I was trying to find a new buddy for one of my guns. And I was like, I scrolled through it and I see all this white. And I'm like, so many of these teams have a different primary color than white or black. And it's like, you know, like imagine if FlyQuest did it and they're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to like keep it white. No, put it green and put it red. Like, come on. <laughs> Like they would have done that, or like even EG, like use the like the dark blue that they have, or like yeah. the green that they've been trying to push for some reason. Which I, I don't know if I'm on board with that yet. You know, I don't know if I'm on board with the G with the green from EG. It's it's, it's bold. It's a it's 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 Seattle, whatever. Um, I think it actually is kind of very Seattle, but or like loud is so green. K Corp, use your blue. Fanatics is orange, at least. Yeah. There's that. But, like, I, oh, like Vitality. Vitality didn't do, they didn't use yellow, I don't think. Which is, like, why? Like, that's such a big... Or, like, Navi, too. I think Navi might have done yellow. But I think Vitality didn't. Or maybe I'm not those switched. But, like, still. You know? Yellow. Or colors. And I know you would have loved the yellow. Even though you no, really for real. Navi. This is a total changing of the guard, though, in BCT. Like, a lot of these teams... Like, I don't think we saw... There's only, like, what? A couple repeat attendees, right? From champs. Loud and peep paper X, right? Yeah. I don't because K Corp and Heretics wouldn't make it, but EDG also, and then FPX made it. So half of them are re- returning, but two of them are from China, so that doesn't really count because China is such a like a two team region. Yeah, you know, yeah. One team region, you know. EDG is is China. Like they're never not gonna make it out of China. I yeah. Think. But then like, at least Pacific. Like you think? No, I don't. I did not see Genji coming out of. Out of out of Pacific, I yeah, thought, and I think did I to be honest. I honestly didn't think people. I didn't think DRX though, to be honest. I didn't think DRX was gonna win though, mm. because of flashback and Foxy Nine. I just, you know, like I trust DRX, but also like, it's like what they had going for them was that they were consistently able to make it out of the region with their old core five, and then they, yeah. they kind of broke it, which is like, all right, man, that's too bad. Um, moving on though, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We are gonna do shameless plug, probably your favorite segment. Um, <laughs> where can we find you? Where can um, we find you? All right, you guys can find me on <laughs> on TikTok and Twitter and Twitch, all at Clockracy, and I am gonna start posting on YouTube. Hopefully, don't hold me to that, but I do have some reels up there already. Um. Also at Clockracy, so mm-hmm. that's about it, I think. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I did, I did, I did like have to go when I was doing research yesterday. I was like looking at all your socials and stuff like that, and I was like, "There's just reels on tick on, on YouTube. All you have is your shorts." But it's yeah. fine. I know the struggle of. Oh my god, I made a TikTok. Okay, now I gotta post it on TikTok. Gotta post it on Instagram. Gotta post it on YouTube. Yeah. Gotta post it on Facebook. Gotta post it on Vine. Gotta post it on Tumblr. Gotta put it on Reddit. It's, it's so know. much. <laughs> <laughs> same, with, I mean, with my articles, it's the same thing. Twitter, and then I gotta throw it on on a uh, on on Reddit too for Valcomp, r slash Valcomp, u slash Fortaddy because I I can't change it. Um, <laughs> and then um, it's already posted the medium, and then I got I supposed to, I'm supposed to put it in the Discord, but I haven't done that for like a couple months, which is like yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, that's my L. Future projects. You have any future projects you want to plug? Uh, maybe I don't know. See, like I have some ideas. I have some ideas cooking, but I don't know if like they're gonna come to fruition. So yeah, I well, guess you, you just gotta have do to it. Wait. You know, you just gotta yeah. do it. Like I, yeah. like I've been saying, I'm gonna do a podcast for like <laughs> shit. I've been saying I'm gonna do a podcast since like probably last year, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I posted on my private Twitter. I was like, okay, I'm going to come up with a pot with a plan by the end of this week. And then I did because I put it on, because I put it on the internet for all five of my private Twitter followers to see. Yeah. They and hold you worked. accountable. They hold me accountable. Even though I get like no likes on that account. I get no likes on my Twitter account anyways, but um, I, I'm going to do my little shameless plug too. Cause 
find follow my Twitter. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but I do have personal socials. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people know that, but they don't care. But I do have personal socials at Cali Kaya, C A L I C A Y U H. Um, everywhere. Because I'm a mom. You I'm spit a mom that out person. so fast. I am my own person. I had to spell my name a bunch of times a day at the doctor's office, which is like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then future projects, no future projects, articles, podcast, uh, center stage, which is my this short one take mobile mail style type stuff, which I'm having a lot of fun making. Actually, I made one and I had a lot of fun with it and I had a lot of fun with this podcast, too, because it's like it's awesome. It's like great to do stuff that isn't just writing and kind of build it out. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you one more time for coming on. Happy International Women's Day once again. Yeah, thank you. Um, do you have any final points you want to make? No, I think I'm okay. <laughs> no hashtag PP Rising. Um, I guess yeah. Hashtag PP Rising. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't have any final questions for you. It's it is there in my notes, just in case I had final questions. But you know, I mean, I don't have any. It's just, my brain's not very big. <laughs> um so thank you all for watching or listening wherever you find this um and uh next edition i think the next edition we're gonna have should come out uh a couple weeks or so when i figure out how to do this stuff again um they'll come out more frequently as i figure out how to schedule edit research all of this stuff it's gonna get faster as i get better at it which is how everything works you know um but i think i believe the next edition is gonna um is gonna feature Blade or Cat from Aurora series. So we're gonna go collegiate next week or next time. Um so thank you again for watching if you're here on YouTube. Thank you again for listening if you're on Spotify. Um uh, make sure to follow Clocracy or Chloe everywhere. Everywhere, please, everywhere. Um even if you can find like, I don't know, like follow her on Facebook. I'm just kidding. Don't not on Facebook. Um <laughs> But yeah, follow all the socials. I'll put them in the description of the YouTube um, video. And um, also, you know, leave a like if you enjoy it because it helps us out a little bit and subscribe for more content like this. Make sure to check out the articles. Um, what else? Follow Emphasis on Twitter, emphasis, at EmphasisGG, because we're trying to build that up again. Um, have a great day. Drink your water. If you don't drink your water, you might get sludge in your gallbladder. I found that out recently. So oh. don't do the same thing as me. But yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day.